What is going on guys, MJ2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the real grade God Gundam from Mobile Fighter G Gundam. Also anticlimatically known as the Burning Gundam in American soil, its hand is burning red, and its loud cry tells him to lead the future century into the real grade line. For a real grade, the runner count of 12 runners including the beams is rather shocking, as it's less than most modern real grades, even given the inclusion of the moderately sized decal sheets and the three halo rings. Don't be deceived though, as the build feels very advanced, since there are a ton of small parts to deal with, like the cheeks and the knee triangles to name a few, and not to mention that roughly 90% of the outer armor is undergated. So even when it took me like an hour or an hour and a half to put the frame together, it takes much longer to apply the armor. But because of those undergates, a Meikyo Shisui version of this kit is only a matter of time. But apart from that, the build is rather straightforward, though I won't recommend it to beginners as you really need to know what you're doing. Otherwise, it's a pretty enjoyable build that you'll hopefully enjoy cleaning up after. Straight assembly complete and the real grade God Gundam is nothing short of stunning. The overall design is represented well, the surface details are plentiful and very defined which renders panel lining optional, and the two-tone white treatment is subtle yet visible without being too overboard with the panel separation. That said, they have taken some design liberties for the real grade. Every single edge has been sharpened, making the kit look ferocious, the waist is slimmed down to give it a more athletic look, while the gauntlets, skirts, and wings have been enlarged to add more of an imposing profile. The fact that everything is color separated, from the grey gaps on the shoulders, skirts, and ankle guards, to the head vulcans molded onto the v-fin, and even the two-tone white pieces on the head, everything you see is elegantly executed. Realistic? Yeah right, even the use of the decals doesn't take away from the super robot aura of the God Gundam. Thankfully so as well, as that is the spirit of the God Gundam. Overall, the looks deserve a chef's kiss, especially from a melee freak like me. It's also around the same height as the high grade God Gundam, so it will not look like it's a cut above the rest like let's say the real grade high new Gundam. For articulation, oh boy. The head is on a ball joint, so simple rolls and the head rotation is possible, pretty easily as well. There is also a neck joint allowing for exceptional upwards and downwards looks, pretty standard, but all sensibility is stripped away with the chicken neck thanks to the joint at the collar. The arms can swivel out, while they can roll and rotate in their sockets. The ball joint is way too small for the universal high grade standard by the way. The shoulder armor is independent, and there is a perpendicular arm raise until you realize that the shoulder is double jointed, allowing for the arm to extend very far down to a weird effect, but it allows for the arm to reach across and touch the other shoulder with ease. Not so much for calling the teacher though. There's a bicep cut, double jointed elbows, a rather loose forearm rotation, and the double jointed gauntlets. The claws and the finger protectors are ball jointed, while the thumb protector is hinged, as well as the forearm. The wrists are ball jointed as usual, and the karate chop hands have a knuckle joint. There is a joint that can be tugged up in the waist which unlocks the ridiculous forwards and backwards crunching, while the torso, ab and waist joints allow for flexible side crunching. The waist can also rotate all the way. The front skirts can flare out and move up, while the side skirts are ball jointed at the back skirts, which would mean back skirt movement will drag the side skirts along, but they can rotate to readjust their positions. The legs can drop down individually, and this is the catalyst for the absolutely insane front splits and side splits that give the Bagheera bow some competition. There's an inwards thigh tilt, thigh swivel, double jointed knees, opening leg thruster panel, ball jointed ankle guard that is jointed in the back, and a ball joint at the foot that doesn't do much, because the real work is done by the joint at the feet, and the rotating toes and heels. The toes can also move, especially upwards, and bend even further up at the tip. Finally, the back path thrusters can move individually, and the wings can open up like expected. 
but the entire assembly can rotate for adjustments, especially after they are flat back with the joint at the base. The entire backpack can also be adjusted as well. Altogether, there is an absolutely ludicrous amount of movement in the real great God Gundam, so the sky is the limit when it comes to poses. Although the core lander can be rather easily knocked off while posing, and the loose forearm rotation does dent the overall experience. Tighten that up, and the stability will be perfect. For gimmicks, you can detach the core lander from the back and have it displayed individually, especially with the action-based hole provided underneath. The canopy can also open up for a potential someone to hop into the very detailed seat inside. Except for the fact that a pilot figure is not included, neither is an opening cup and hatch, but honestly, I'd rather not sacrifice the neck articulation for a trap door. Accessories start with the wide selection of hands. A set of fists, holding hands, open hands, karate chop hands, glossy metallic orange open hands, and a right god finger. Even though it's weird that there's no left god finger, I'd say this is more than sufficient. As for weapons, the clavicle machine cannons have a double jointed opening hatch to reveal them for use, without the worry of the hatch going missing on you. Meanwhile, the only handheld weapons are the beam swords, which can be slid into the hands for use with the included SB16 beams. If these beams look familiar, it's because they're the ones included with the high grade mega shiki, only in pink giving the beam source the awesome katana-shaped blade. They can also be slid onto the racks on the side skirts for solid storage when not in use. The holsters can also rotate for adjustments. The final trick of the God Gundam is to activate the hyper mode, achieved by opening up the yellow rim and blue chest hatch, raising the shoulder armor, opening up the wings, slotting the rings onto the included brace, which has bending arms to make the process somewhat easier, and plug in the assembly onto the backpack. And in the end, it's an easy process that delivers great results. I mean, the King of Hearts logo in the energy multiplier if you have used the decal, the slight separation in the layers of the halo, and the gradation effects between the red, orange, and yellow, this will definitely draw some eyes. Slide the Godfinger protector forward, open up the claws, adjust the blue pieces, and equip the orange piece hand to execute the erupting god finger. If not, use the pair of open ones for the Sekiha Tenkyoken. If you want to prop the kit up, a hatch on the butt can be opened up to reveal an action base hole, a first for real grades as this has no stand adapter. Alternatively, you can prop it up with the hole on the ring brace when you have it equipped onto the Gundam. In conclusion, I will strongly recommend the real great God Gundam. Coming from a melee freak, you may call me a bit biased, but the kit speaks for itself. With a relatively light loadout, Bandai's attention is focused more on the looks and articulation, and it delivers to the maximum. The kit respects the original design, while the sharpened edges tunes out the ferocity, and the surface detail and the two-tone white adds a layer of visual depth. The points of articulation are more numerous than ever, but not to the detriment of the kit as it can pull off every pose imaginable, living up to its hype. The loadout deserves some praise as well, as the number of hands expands display options even further, the SB16 beams are a great stylistic choice, and the halo just adds the cherry on top. The loose forearms and core lander can be a bit annoying, but it's not the hardest thing to fix. Sure, it doesn't make the high grade obsolete, as that is still a great budget kit for the scale, but if you're looking for the god of god Gundams, look no further than this kit right here. It's absolutely worth paying double the price of the high grade for. And that's all for me. Thank you for watching, drop a like and comment if you did enjoy the video, subscribe for more content like this, and feel free to follow me on social media with the links down below. That said, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out guys. Bye-bye.